Hello, this is uh, part one of a new and I think original project. Uh, a few, well, a couple of weeks ago now, I was looking at uh, hand wheels for machine tools as a need a boxed unit with um, various other controls in it for a customer. But whilst I was searching for them, I saw this. And I thought, doesn't that look a lot like a traditional safe style combination lock dial? I mean, as it as they come, they've got the little, ha little winding handle on, but that's just an M3 screw. You can take it out and uh, bung it up. I've just put a PC M3 screw in there, just a, a, a button head screw just to bring it up. It should be possible to replace the whole disc as well and just put a couple of completely plain discs if you wanted to. But appearance wise, it's a hundred position, rather nice looking dial. Um, this is, I believe, a 60mm one. You can also get them in, the, I think, 80mm. So you can get an even bigger one. That, you know, that size. I thought it looked an awful lot like a combination lock. So what would happen if you actually make it work as a combination lock? So that's what I've done. All this is is a quadrature encoder. It gives out two signals, a 90 degree offset, and which, which is first or second, depending on the direction. So if you're going clockwise, say signal A will go high, then signal B goes high. If you're going anti-clockwise, signal B goes high, then signal A goes high. It's the same sequence as one of these little 20-way ones, which are a bit cheaper. But this one's got 100 positions rather than 20. So all I've got on here is a little pick, uh, a 16F183233, sorry, it's the big brother of the... 318313. Uh, same core basically, just uh, more peripherals, extra port on it. But it's a, a 32 megahertz low power CPU or mic microcontroller. And uh, it's uh, pretty much ideal for this. There's just enough pins with a 14 pin package. So, uh, I mean, some of, the, some of the parts on here are just debugging and monitoring whilst I've been working on, the, on it. So as far as I can zoom in. So I've got a permanent power LED, which it wouldn't normally have. That just shows the battery's connected. Run it on a little lithium cell, which has a USB charger and protection unit. Stuck on a double-sided tape, just as a convenient power source. And there's, then there's five connections to the dial. Uh, there's power ground and the AB signals from the encoder dial and then there's a one extra wire for a button between that and ground which is the white one on here at the moment I'm using the button that's built into this as the button um, but if you're only using the dial the, the you know the big dial you'd have just a single uh, conventional two contact button that acts as a reset and release button. Uh, reset uh, to turn power on and start the sequence and release if you've entered the right combination. Um, and that one is a red lead for lock release. And that one at the moment is just a direct monitor of the power on line that uh, in that feeds power to the encoders. Um, the idea is this one will work in 0 to 99 with the numbers on the dial or one of these you could use it uh, similarly but it would be steps of 5 because it's only got 20 positions so you'd have 0, 5, 10. You could have a, a rather more limited range of options but it's cheaper, it's smaller and still quite usable because uh, there's no real limit to how many digits you can make your combination with a little electronic one. I've, I've set it so it can be up to 12 digits, uh, which gives you lots of possibilities. Uh, oh, by the way, that this connection is just the uh, uh, programmer debugger. Um, you could use a Picket 3 or Picket 4 or something like that, you could have all the same connections. So the actual operating sequence, if I 
get things so you can see them. You'll see the red lead and the dial basically. Um, zoom in a bit. I'm fully zoomed in on that anyway. Okay. Um, get that square so you can see when it's. Yeah, you can just see the index mark there. That's where the zero is. And if I try and put that so you can see it still. The combination I've got set on this is at the moment 10, 67, 44. I'll look away for a bit, bit of paper. So, in operation, you set the dial to zero initially because these haven't got an absolute position. It doesn't know where it is, only how much you move it. So, set it to zero, press the power button, which switches the power on. Set each digit, wait more than half a second, I think it's got it set to about 0.8 of a second. So was it 10, 67, 44, 44. Now if I didn't mess up that 67 by waiting too long, I did. <laughs> I've been talking too much. But wait for it to power down again now. There we go. Right, so let's try again. Power on. 10. 67. 44. <laughs> of course, when I've tried to do a video, it doesn't work. Murphy's Law. Okay, right, a uh, quick bit of debugging. I'd missed um, a, a resetting the dial position at one point, so it lost track of where it was after power being off. Uh, so, try again. Dial on zero, power on. 10, 67, 44, release. And I've modified so the power goes off instantly, the lock release finishes. And on again. Down zero, power, 10, 67, 44, release. Just uh, again to try and show it, this is reading the combination. Power on. I'll deliberately go to 11 rather than 10. 67. 44. Nothing. Proper combination again. And release. Now, one of the things I've got to do on this, as well as, well as redo it with a much tidier layout, is add a setting mode switch. The IC has internal EEPROM 256 bytes, so it's, there's plenty of memory to store permanently or semi permanently any combination you like. So, what it would probably have is a default combination, simple three digit combination like 10, 20, 30. Uh, and then all you do is you use the setting switch on the board, which should be mounted away from the faceplate of the lock. So no one can get to the connections. Put it in setting mode, press the button, dial the combination. Um, for that, you then press the button again, dial the combination again, and uh, it will. If you if you get the correct new well a new combination twice the save in a row, 
it will then store that as the working combination. Uh, that's what the other two lights are for. So that one would actually be, a bit be um, the power on and status indicator light. Uh, the other one probably setting mode indicator. So you know what it's doing when it's in setting mode, and if it's accepted a new combination, it should, it, you know, the lights should uh, blink or whatever. Uh, so that's for the next update. But as I say, I need to tidy up a bit first. As you can see, it does function as it is. And oh, just for the fun of it, I'll change the combination. Just stop the program. So make it eighteen thirty six seventy two. Just let it recompile and reload the program. Just a few seconds. We're running. Okay. So zero power on. Eighteen. Thirty-six. Seventy-two. Unlock. If I try and use the old ten twenty-three ten. Uh, was it 106744 combination now? Put that at zero. Ten, uh, so 10, 67, what is it, 44. That does nothing. So I've not got the uh, extra switch on and the, the lots of status indicator LEDs on the panel, really. Um, so you can. Uh, see what's happening and set, set, reset the combination. There'll be another jumper on here as well. I've not got the pin connected yet, but it's about uh, it's one with no connections in the middle of that side. Um, that would have a jumper between power and ground to select if it's used a 100 count dial or a 20 count dial. Um, whereas this one, each time that there's an increment or decrement, it causes an interrupt and, ca and, in and counts will go down one. Just by having the jumper on, you can make it count up or down five. So that still tracks a hundred through one revolution and work exactly the same. But you just count them up. The combination would have to be in steps of five. But you can, again, you can have as many digits as you like. Anyway, that's a, a uh, an intro, and uh, the next one will be a bit more. Uh, oh, no, attractive. <laughs> we call it, but. Uh, Improved cosmetically version, um, probably mounted in the box rather than just a uh, loose on panel. You can see there's no height on these things, so it, it uh, will fit in a quite small space. And I've just mounted it on a plastic box lid uh, as a way of holding it and demonstrating it and putting a button on. Anyway, hope that's of interest, and uh, please like and subscribe if you uh, want to see more like this. Uh, thanks for watching.